So, hi, welcome to our tribe family yeah, and morning. to friends that are listening today. Um, we're just doing a recording for you in front of a live studio Ooh. audience. <laughs> and hopefully you'll be encouraged as you listen to the word that Stu has prepared for you today. As is our custom, we usually have family time before our meetings and we like to celebrate birthdays. So did anybody have a birthday this week? Okay, unfortunately we can't give you your chocolate, but this is not our first take. Um, so, Stu has volunteered to eat the chocolate for you. Happy birthday, Stu. <laughs> You've had enough actually, but you can get that later. Well, the Bible says, taste and see that God is good. <laughs> so, before I hand over to Stu, I just want to share a word of encouragement with you. Um, in the times that we're living in, the crazy, crazy times that we're living in, um, there's so much that wants to take our focus away from God and what he's doing. And there's so much to talk about. But I've just been encouraged that we need to, in this season, especially in the last two weeks of this lockdown, that we're all this, what's the word? Quarantine. Incubation period right. that we're in. Um, that we actually keep our eyes focused on the Lord. And so I want to read something from Matthew 17. And it's a story of when Jesus was um, transfigured on the mountain and his disciples were with him and they they actually heard the voice of God coming out of the cloud and the voice terrified them so much that they actually fell down it says when they heard it they fell on their faces and were seized with alarm and were struck with fear there's something about the incredible voice of God and I don't want to be God <laughs> on God's enemy when this voice thunders um, but Jesus came to them and he touched them and he said to them, get up, do not be afraid. And verse 8, and when they raised their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. Yeah. Now the context of this is that they were afraid of the voice of God. But a lot of people today are afraid of a lot of other things. And can we just feel the touch of Jesus on us as you, as you, Feel his hand on you saying, get up, don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. And as that realization comes that Jesus is with us, that his hand is on us, and he's telling us not to be afraid, that we will raise our eyes and we will see Jesus only. So let's pray as we go into this time of sharing the word with you. And um, yeah, we just pray that you'll be blessed and enjoy and be fed because Jesus loves to feed his people with the word. So. So, Jesus, we thank you for your presence. Yes, we Father, do. I pray that you would touch every single person watching. Yeah. Your word is alive, it's active, mm -hmm. it's sharper than any double-edged sword. Yes, and, Lord, your presence is within all of your people. And those that don't know you, Jesus, mm -hmm. touch them today. Yes. Let them just have a revelation yes, of who Lord. you are. And mm -hmm. may we see only you, Jesus, yes. as we raise our eyes and we put them on you. So, yeah, I'm going to hand over to Stu and enjoy the message. Thank yes. you. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. It was a, a great word of encouragement. And I think it's so true in the light of what we're all facing, um, that we allow God to be the biggest voice and influence of our hearts. He loves you. He loves me. He's not afraid, as we spoke about last week, of this thing called coronavirus it's a word it's a virus it's it's got nothing in comparison to our great god so i want to encourage us again just to renew our minds in a season like this when when there's so much fear and so many things out there in the world i want to encourage you to allow god's word to really rest and settle in your heart jesus said i give you my peace he didn't say you'll earn my peace he doesn't say i'll give you my peace if the circumstances are, are right and, and correct I give you my peace. That's a gift. All we need to do is receive it. And that peace lasts through any and every situation in life. Doesn't matter what we're going through. We can enjoy the eternal peace of God right now, right here. So I think this is an amazing time for us to reset, realign, as Jen was saying, for us to allow the bigness of God, the majesty of Jesus 
to captivate our hearts afresh. Nothing else should. We should only be afraid of God in a healthy, wonderful way that He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So, so what a privilege again this morning just to share with you some words of encouragement, some words that maybe would stir your heart. And, and uh, again, if you're listening um, for the first time, uh, it's so wonderful to have you with us and uh, really appreciate you taking some time. We'll try and keep it around 20 minutes so that not all of your data gets used, so that you could be encouraged, uh, God would speak to your heart, and I pray that we all experience His presence, even as you listen to this. I know that it's a new technology for many of us. I prefer just being in front of people we can hug and love and touch. Um, this is quite different, but let's trust God that even in this moment, how you, uh, however you're hearing this, that His presence would come upon you, that you'd experience the real manifest presence of Jesus, because that's what we trust for every Sunday when we meet, every time we meet as believers, is that God would come and manifest His presence. So I pray to be no different for us this morning. So I, I want to speak to you this morning just around looking uh, for a heavenly home. See, friends, I, I think so much has been unsettled for us. So much has been unsettled for us over the last little while. There's a lot of uncertainty. How long is this going to last? Will it end when the lockdown's over? You look around at all the news. Honestly, friends, I want to tell you, let's look a little longer and a little higher to the realm of heaven. And I want to encourage you uh, today from a few passages of Scripture, but if you can just go with me to Hebrews 11, I want to tell you some amazing stories here. And listen to this. These are people that we can look back at, that our hearts can be encouraged today. They are normal people like you and I. Um, Abraham was a normal man that listened to God and he believed God and God used him mightily. You and I are normal people. When we obey God, he uses us mightily. It might not be on a national scale, but it could be in somebody's life to see God's kingdom come and for people to look at you and me and see, wow, we are different in a time like this. And when they say, why are you so at peace? Why do you seem to have joy? Why are you not bothered? Well, we can tell them honestly is because we believe in Jesus. We have an eternal home that we're going to. We're not trying to settle our lives here on earth. We're actually not from this place. We live here, but we're not from here. And so I want to read from uh, verse uh, 8 in Hebrews 11. And it says this. It says, By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith he went to live in a land of promise, as a foreign land, uh, sorry, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. By faith Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him who promised uh, as faithful. Therefore, from one man, um, sorry, let me just make sure I've got my scriptures right here. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. I wonder if you could say that with me, that, that I am a stranger and an exile on the earth. I've got a South African passport. I'm a South African citizen. I've uh, had the privilege of traveling to many nations. But I'm realizing more and more I'm a stranger and an exile on this earth. Even though I have a citizenship in a natural realm, I'm actually friends from another realm. If you're born again, you are from another realm. You're a stranger. You're an exile on this earth. This isn't our home. This is, this is some place that we are manifesting the kingdom of heaven. But like Abraham, he looked at something else. He was looking for a designer uh, and, and a building whose architect was God. He was looking in the spirit at something more than just the earth. Yes, God's got an inheritance for us. And, and I want to tell you, that's the thing we can trust him for. Uh, in all of what's happening around us, God's still a provider. He's amazing. But I want to tell you right now. The more I'm looking around me, I'm realizing I'm a citizen of another kingdom. I'm an ambassador of heaven. So I'm actually an exile. I'm a stranger on the earth. So he says this, for people who speak like this, make it clear they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land from which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country. That is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. 
for he has prepared for them a city. Isn't that amazing? God's not ashamed to be their God because he's prepared for them a city. But it says in verse 16, as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. In this time, I don't know what you're desiring. I think many people are like, can we just get out of the flat? Can we get out of the home so the kids can go back to school? I understand that. But I want to tell you that the reality is when we start realizing who we are, that something happened to us when we got born again, when, when we were taken out of death and put into life, we were taken out of darkness and put into light, we were taken out of first Adam and put into last Adam, Jesus, something happened that would forever and for eternity change for us. We became citizens of heaven. My citizenship on the earth is temporary. It's going to end. When I die, it's over. But my citizenship in heaven is eternal. So if you and I could begin to say in all of this mess, in all of this just uncomfortable place, can you and I stop and say, God, give me an eternal perspective so I can frame my life rightly and I can begin to realize I'm not living for a retirement. I'm not living for natural things. doesn't matter what shakes around me. I can be confident like Abraham because I've got a better country to go to, an unshakable country, a country whose architect is God, a builder who's, who is God himself. Friends, that's how they made it through what they did. Abraham left a wonderful house. He had a great home and he followed God, not knowing where God was leading him, but he trusted God. See, I think this is a time when you and I get to trust God, even when we don't know the outcome. Uh, we, 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 we sit with a, a sense of, wow, in, in 18 days or 12 days, this is going to be over. We're almost halfway. Wow, we, we're aiming for that. Friends, lift your eye, eyes higher and aim for eternity. Aim for heaven. Aim for heaven. Doesn't matter what happens now. Doesn't matter what happens in the next couple of weeks, next couple of years, next decade or two decades. I don't know how long this is going to be on in terms of the world as it is. We can do this. We're living for another realm. We're living for another homeland. And I belong to God. I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm an ambassador of Christ. So I've got a different mandate on my life. You as a believer, you've got a different mandate on your life. And I want to encourage you that this morning, with that this morning, that you begin to say, Lord, let me look differently. I don't want to live like a natural person and go to church on Sundays and say I'm a Christian and yes, I'm going to die and go to heaven. But how do we live here with a deep perspective and, and a reference point of eternity to say, now that I'm here, what's my goal? Why am I here? And how am I going to live no matter what happens around me? So I want to go back to a, a scripture. And it's one where uh, Paul speaks. And it's in Philippians chapter 3. And I love what he, he writes because he, he has this great apostle. And again, Paul was just a man like you and I. He encountered God uh, on the road to Damascus and his whole life changed. He was a religious man who honestly thought he was doing God's will by killing Christians. And I want to tell you, friends, for us, nobody just gets into this realm of eternity by doing good, or by trying to be nice, or we get into this new realm, this new heavenly citizenship through the finished work of Jesus. And we receive that. And then something happens to us, as you'll see in a scripture uh, in a moment. But Paul writes, he says, whatever gain I had, I count it as loss. Philippians chapter 3. For the sake of Christ, indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and counted them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. That as by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Well, I love Paul's right here. Paul saying this. He says, I want to know Christ. That's the essence. He says, I've lost so many things. He counts them as rubbish. I mean, it would be horrible not to have some assets. But in the light of Jesus, is it really is it really that I've lost something in comparison to knowing Jesus for eternity? Friends, it's nothing. And Paul is helping us to understand, friends, don't hold on to the natural things. Don't look to the natural things. Look to Jesus. It's worth it. The hardships that Paul went through. He went through many hardships. Not once did he respond like a victim. Not once did he complain. He always saw that in the light of eternity because Paul understood 
that he was now a citizen of heaven. He freely gave himself to serve Christ. He called himself a bond slave. He said, I am here to serve Jesus willingly, joyfully. Most of what he wrote, most of the letters of encouragement to you and I that we read today were written from prison. Not where he wanted to go and self-quarantine. He was forced there. He was put in there, falsely accused. But in those places, he found freedom. He found glory. He found the realm of heaven break into his cell. And he penned letters that for, forever are encouragement to us. Friends, you and I, as believers, we're no different to Paul. We have Holy Spirit living inside of us. It's just how we see these seasons. If you see the season as a season on its own without eternity in, in mind, you must probably be going to be disappointed. You must probably be going to be anxious and frustrated. But I want to encourage you today. Don't let that stop you. Try. Don't let that, that, that limit the, the, the passion in your heart to say, I'm going to go after God. I'm going to trust God for the inheritance that He's promised me. Friends, God's not on pause. He's not in quarantine. Holy Spirit is not in quarantine. He's inside every believer, you and me, and He wants to fill us with hope and joy so we can release something of God's glory in a world that is completely losing its mind. Because we have got something powerful. We've got Holy Spirit. We've got joy. We've got eternal life. And then He says this. He says, now that I've already obtained this, or am already perfect. Not that He says it. Sorry. Not that I've already obtained this, or am already perfect. But I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I've made it my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on to the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of you who are mature think this way. So there's a sense that, that maturity is not thinking now and me. Maturity is thinking of there's something God's got for us. And I said in the beginning of the year, tribe, I feel God's called us this year, not knowing obviously anything of what was coming. God's called us to maturity and to fruitfulness. And I want to tell you, fruitfulness will not happen when a lockdown is lifted or, or when there's economy uh, recovery. No, fruitfulness happens because of who's inside of us and where we connected. And as the believer, we are grafted into Jesus. We are put into Christ. And he's given his spirit to us. So you don't need anything else but Holy Spirit and faith in his finished work for you and I to be fruitful. And, and this is a mature response is to say, why? wait a second, like Paul, he says, I press on. I'm not going to look around me. I'm going to look to the heavenly call like Abraham. I'm going to see something eternal and say, I want that. I want that because that's what God's got for me. And the way he lived, he made it count, friends. He made it count. So he says this. Brothers, in verse 17, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. Wow. People might be looking at you and I want to say, how are you walking? How are you talking? Because that's an encouragement to say, hey, be somebody who releases hope. Be somebody like Paul who speaks about eternity, who speaks about a God who's, who's not shaken, doesn't matter what environment is in. He released hope and joy. He, he, he blessed people. People were encouraged by his letters, even though he was confined to a very dingy uh, little cell and, and obviously not his choice. But he never saw that as, I'm a victim of circumstance. No, I'm a prisoner of Christ. I'm a son of the most high God. I'm an ambassador. So I'm going to release that unseen realm into the seen realm. And I'm going to release power and life to people that would read my words of encouragement. Wow. You and I, we're not forced to do this in the sense of, um, you know, it's, it's going to last forever. It's just because we want to be socially responsible. But I want to tell you, you've got a cell phone. Maybe you, you, you want to phone people and tell them about Jesus. It's time to be bold. People are, are afraid. I want to tell you right now, for the high call of God, don't step back. There is an inheritance to lay hold of. Let Holy Spirit lead you. Maybe a, a name has come up in your heart. Maybe a friend, maybe a family member. And you, you keep thinking of that person. Phone them, SMS them, WhatsApp them, and tell them, I've been thinking about you. I'm praying for you. I want to tell you that God loves you. You are part of doing what God wants you to do. There's an inheritance for us to lay hold of. So I want to encourage you this morning with this mindset. It's a mindset of putting the end in mind before you start. And this is exactly what Abraham did. God called him. He showed him something. He said, listen, look at the stars. Look, at, look up, look down and see all of that. I've got that for you. And Abraham believed God. And you and I should not be looking around us. Firstly, we should be listening to what God has said. And God has called us upward. Our home, friends, as a believer, mind your home, is heaven. 
That's our ultimate home. So this is all temporary. This is all going to change. It might be hard. And, and I think we shouldn't be afraid of that because Jesus made this promise. I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Friends, what an incredible promise. We are not going to go through any hardships alone. He's with us. If you're alone in your room, uh, I think of Rosemary. I think of some people that, uh, in our own house, uh, Michael and, and um, Ronald. There's, there's a couple of folks in our own tribe that are on their own in, in, in small houses or, or they're just on their own isolated. Jesus said this, I'm never going to leave you. He says, with you. See, we can take heart in that. We can say, thank you, Holy Spirit. It's real. It's not a little cliche that we use. It's a reality of a person who's with me and with you right now. And so I want to I want to just finish off with one or two scriptures just from Ephesians chapter 2 to remind you of what happened. You see, to be a Christian, friends, is not just to have a new title. It's to have a whole new humanity, a whole new um, reality in our lives. See, I was living for myself. I'd gone to church. I'd known scriptures. I'd, I'd known all of that. But I wasn't born again. I wasn't taken out of a dead state in Adam, first Adam, where I was dead to sin. And I, I, I came out by the power of the gospel. Jesus saved me and he gave me a brand new life. He made me to be born again by the Spirit. And that happened 33 years ago. And I've been serving God for 33 years. I was, I was messed up. I might have had a, a little bit of a... a you know, good boy background, head boy, and all that. But I was broken by sin. I was captured by, by, captured by sin. I needed God's saving power to bring me out of that. And I've been following Jesus. And I can say with Paul, not I, I don't see myself as him as anything, but I, I'm not perfect. But I want to tell you, I'm righteous because God has made me righteous. And I want to live for eternity. I'm not an ambassador of this world, I'm an ambassador of heaven and so that means i've got to think differently i've got to remember of an eternal perspective this is what i'm living for if i forget that friends all of this around me all of the oh, what's happening and, and how long is this going to last is it going to be jobs what's the economy going to be like all of that friends all of that god knows and he said this i'll still be your provider if i have to send ravens to feed you i'll do that uh, don't worry because i'm god i made a covenant to my people see i can believe that because that's what our king does. So Paul writes again in Ephesians and he says this. Uh, I want to just read this and then, then we'll pray together. Uh, verse 14 of, of chapter 2. He says, Our reconciling peace is Jesus. And I'm reading from the Passion Translation. He has made Jew and non-Jew one in Christ. By dying as our sacrifice, he has broken down every wall of prejudice that separated us and has now made us equal through our union with Christ. Ethnic hatred has been dissolved by the crucifixion of his precious body on the cross. The legal code that stood be condemning every one of us has now been repealed by his command. His triune essence has made peace between us by starting over, forming one new race of humanity, Jews and non-Jews, fused together in Jesus. Just think about that. He has started one new humanity. Friends, this is the beautiful thing around being a believer, a genuine Christ follower, born again of the Spirit, is that we have become one new humanity. 2 Corinthians 5, Paul writes again, he says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. And we then start realizing, oh, I'm an ambassador of heaven. That's why I want to come back to, to Hebrews where he says he was looking for something else. So in this time... As you're sitting and, and obviously can't go around if you're not an essential worker, maybe get out to the shops every now and then to buy some food and, and um, bread milk. Just remember this. You're an ambassador of heaven. You're going to go through some hardships. Jesus promised us that. Paul promised us that. So let's not think hardships is, is a sign of the enemy. No. Hardships is where you and I get to shine. Where you and I get to hear God's voice and begin to release the unseen realm and be an encouragement. Draw from resources that people don't have outside of Christ and pull peace into this place. Speak words of hope. Release joy. Bless. Bring something of life from heaven. So he says in 16, verse 16, the two have now become one. We live restored to God and reconciled in the body of Christ. Through his crucifixion, hatred died. For the Messiah has come to preach the sweet message to you, the ones who are distant and the ones who are near. And now, because we are united to Christ, we both have equal and direct access in the realm of the Holy Spirit to come before the Father. 
So, listen to this, you are not foreigners or guests, but rather you are children of the city of the Holy Ones, with all the rights as family members of the household of God. You are rising like perfectly fitted stones of the temple, and your lives are being built up together upon an ideal foundation laid upon the apostles and the prophets. And best of all, you are connected to the head cornerstone of the building, the anointed one, Jesus Christ himself. Isn't that amazing? So I want to remind you, as all of this is shaking, you and I have got something absolute solid. We've got an immovable foundation. His name is Jesus. We are living for eternity. We are citizens. As Hebrews tells us, as Ephesians 2 tells us, we are citizens of heaven. We belong to the family of God. Friends, we are aliens and foreigners here. But we have to be a blessing. Because part of what God told Abraham is, I'm going to bless you, Abraham, so that you will be a blessing. So I want to say, whatever is happening around your world, you are blessed. If you're born again, you are blessed to be a blessing. You've got spiritual blessings to give away. There may be practical ways for you to help the people around you. Don't be afraid to do that. God is amazing. Maybe you don't know Jesus and you're listening to this today and you think, well, I, I, I'm, I'm a pretty good guy. I'm a pretty good gal. You know, I'm trying to do my bit and I, I've given some stuff to the SPCA and I'm trying to help out where I can. Friends, that's not enough. If it was enough, Jesus didn't have to die. He would have just said, just don't be nice. But he had to die because it was impossible for you and I to be reconciled to the Father. Impossible by our efforts. Only possible by the finished work of Jesus. And so what, what I want to say to you today is, is that Jesus loves you. He's not condemning you. He doesn't, he isn't angry with you. He died on the cross. And he, 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 he paid a price for your salvation because he loved you so much. Don't push it away. Don't, don't harden your heart. Don't think, oh, well, some other time. No, now is the time of salvation. Now is the time to say yes and to embrace this free gift and then to transfer your life from this natural realm to an eternal realm. See, we're all going to die. That's for sure. I can promise you that we all are going to die someday. This coronavirus is, is not it. We're all going to die. But when you die and you face God and Jesus, Either you're going to stand before a throne of grace and you're going to be blessed for your obedience or you're going to stand before a throne of judgment where you will not have enough evidence for you to prove yourself righteous enough to pass through eternal life and you will be cast out. Friends, that is very real. And I want to ask you today that you'd respond to the free gift of God. Maybe your world is shaken. Maybe you're petrified. Maybe you're terrified. Maybe you're not sure how you're going to recover. Please don't worry about the natural right now. I want to ask you, would you stop and think about the eternal? That's why these people in, in Scripture, like in Abraham, he didn't ever get what he was promised. He, he was promised to be a father of many nations. He had one kid, but he saw something. He saw in the, by, by the Spirit, by faith, he saw that eternal kingdom. And I, I want to encourage you that God would give you grace to see the eternal kingdom and say yes to it. And so I want to encourage you this morning, or whenever you're listening to this, however you're listening to this, that you would stop and allow God to come and speak to your heart. I believe Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart already. If you're a believer, that you're going to say, Lord, please forgive me for thinking naturally and for being affected by the things around me. Like Jen said earlier, I want to listen to your voice that says, don't be afraid. The only one I'm going to be afraid of is you, God. And, and not only that I'm scared of you, but, but that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. And if you say you must be saved, then I want to respond to that. I want to harden my heart. And if you're not saved, that you can be saved today. You can be saved today. And all I'm asking you right now is, if you don't know Jesus, that you could pray this prayer with me and just say, just say this right now. Lord Jesus, I've heard about you and I've maybe known about you going to Sunday school, but I've never received you as my Lord and Savior. I've never confessed that I'm a sinner. And if I die without you, I'll be lost forever, for all eternity outside of you. And I don't want to do that. I want to ask you, please forgive me for my pride of unbelief in Jesus. And so today what I do is I ask Jesus, would you come into my heart and wash me clean in your blood? I don't know everything right now, but I feel in my heart I want to make right with you, God, by receiving, humbling myself and receiving a free gift of life in Jesus. Lord, would you make me a brand new creation? Would you put me into your family that I'll become a citizen of heaven, an ambassador of Christ, so I can grow and mature and learn to, to, to be somebody that others can follow because I'm following Jesus? And so I ask right now, Holy Spirit, would you, would you come and fill my heart with life?
Come and cleanse me from the weight of sin and forgive me from the, the condemnation of all of my sin. That I feel the peace of God right now by the finished work of Jesus. If you've prayed that prayer, just, just receive right now. Just God doing that. If, if, uh, if you saved and, and you just say, thank you, God. Thank you for the reminder. Then I ask that you renew your mind. You just say, Lord, I don't want to live for the natural. I don't want to live for three weeks, three months, 30 years. I want to live forever. And so, Lord, I want a reference point of heaven. I want to press on for heaven. I want to, I want to look for that kingdom and readjust all my life around that priority. And so I, I trust that you be blessed and encouraged. Holy Spirit is so busy working. The joy of God is not left. So you know what? You could be laughing your way through these uh, three weeks of incubation. You could be, honestly, um, you could be full of peace. You don't have to be like the world because we are otherworldly. <laughs> we, have, we have a realm of heaven breaking in, the unseen breaking in, and we can draw from that. And so be encouraged. Maybe you started out in, in a bit of fear. Maybe it's all the unknown. I understand that. There's nothing wrong with that. But just allow God's word to come. So God bless you. Thank you for being with us this morning and listening to this. And uh, look forward to speaking to you again. And, and obviously from Tribe, keep in contact. Uh, it would be great to hear from you. Um, you. You'd have all the information around sending a message or leaving a comment. Especially if you receive Jesus. I, it would thrill me. This would all be worth it if somebody receives Christ and comes to a saving knowledge of the wonderful Savior Jesus. So God bless you. Have an amazing day. And be safe.